Good evening. Welcome to another fun-filled night here on Spirit Connections in the WCTV studio. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> I'm pretty excited. We have a lot of guests tonight. Um, we've, we took a week off because we've started our summer schedule, so yes. it's kind of a light little... Um, it's a light schedule for the summer, but it's nice because you guys will be able to catch some reruns of Spirit Connections, maybe some that you missed and you really wanted to see and you don't have access to YouTube because all of our videos are on YouTube. How are you doing, Steph? Good. How are you? Good. Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be one of those nights. It is going to be one of those nights, but definitely off kilter, off track a little bit. Um, That's okay. One thing I do want to mention for you guys that have, haven't purchased your tickets yet, there is a Legend Trips event this Saturday at Fort Tabor in New Bedford. And I believe, Ooh. I know, Steph Sorry, is going to be in, in Florida. Florida. Yeah. Seriously? Florida? I'll be in New Bedford. You're in Florida. I know. New Bedford. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's the Supernatural Siege at Fort Tabor in New Bedford. You can purchase your tickets by going to legendtrips.com. Definitely it's, go. It's an awesome time. It's worth it. We went there back in October. I'm going to be there doing readings. I believe I might have a couple spots left, so I would love to see you. Make sure you say, oh, I watch your show. You don't have to, but you can just to stroke my ego a little bit. That would be <laughs> There's nice. There's no discount. Just do it anyway. Yeah, no discount. <laughs> nope. Nope. But, uh, <laughs> but I believe we still have some tickets left, so definitely go check that out again. It's Supernatural Siege at Fort Tabor, New Bedford. This Saturday from 6 p.m. to 2 a.m., we're going to have the Oddball crew and the Spooky South, South Coast crew there. And myself, I'll be bundled up with some sort of comforter or blanket around me because I have the skin that is so thin <laughs> that if it's below, <laughs> if it's, I was going to say something else, so I had to stop. Yeah, but if it's yeah. below 80 degrees, <laughs> I... I get really cold. So we definitely right go check the water, it out. Actually, so if anybody that is going, you're surrounded by water on like three sides. So definitely dress warm for the nighttime. Even though it's True. 80 degrees in the, in the daytime. We went, it was 25 degrees. It was it, the first night that it was like frost and Definitely underdressed snow. for yeah, it. I was not. I looked like the Michelin man. I was underdressed. I had ripped jeans and Uggs on. And that was it. Yeah, I'm just I, kidding. <laughs> I had like, no, you didn't. You had a bunch of layers on just like I did. You gave all me gloves. All you could see was our eyes. That yeah. was it. But it was a good time, so definitely go check it out. So we have a pretty exciting show tonight. I'm very, very happy to announce our guests. We have TAPS, the Atlantic Paranormal Society. If you guys couldn't tell by our shirts. Whoops, other way. It's yeah, mine's not obvious or anything. <laughs> I'm going with the mellow look. Steph's out you there. Are. I'm out there. I'm, I'm excited. There. So we have the, the TAPS home team of Rhode Island here. We have some of the members. Not everybody can make it tonight, but I'm very excited for those that did make it all the way here to our studios in Wareham. So welcome, guys. Hi. 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 How are you guys? Good. How are you? Awesome. Oh, good. Thanks okay. for having us. Yes. You're Thank welcome. You yeah. We have Tom. Raise your hand, Tom, so they can see you. Tom, <laughs> Steve, How are you? Joe, Christine. Hello. And then, of course, we have the other ones that couldn't make it, so um, hopefully they make it back when we have you guys on. So how are you guys doing? You're doing well. Doing good. Doing well. So now you guys are the Atlantic Paranormal Society, yeah. and you are the home team. Mm -hmm. Now, for all of you guys at home who might have or don't know who TAPS are, TAPS got their, I want to say popular, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but they got their popularity from being on the show Ghost Hunters, which is part of the Sci-Fi Channel. Now, when did that all start? Um, I believe Jason founded the, the team um, many, many years ago, way before the, the show even started. Um, and then he decided to, to do a documentary film. But then Sci-Fi got in touch and wanted to create a, a TV show out of it, a reality show, instead of doing just a documentary. Um, so then they started the Ghost Hunters franchise. And then that took off like, like skyrocket. Um, and then after that, um, they also did a spin-off show, uh, Ghost Hunters International. Um, mm -hmm. So it's been on for many, many years. So if you haven't watched it, I'm sure people have. Um, but it, it's been great. I love it. 
Now, Joe, were you part of Ghost Hunters and Ghost Hunters International? Yes. Um, first, I, I joined the Atlantic Paranormal Society TAPS, the local team that does the mm -hmm. investigations for, for the home people. Um, and then I got asked to do Ghost Hunters. And I did that of about almost nine, ten months before I got asked to do the international show. Excellent. Mm. So now, have you guys been members all around the same length of time, or is there a newbie? I've been doing it about almost six years, I think I've been. Yeah. Oh, yeah, wow. Yeah, so you've yeah. been... Yeah, Joe, you? it was before Joe got on the show, Joe actually taught me everything I know. Oh. About ghost hunting. Oh. No, Joe was the, pretty much the team lead when I joined, so... So I knew Joe Joe before Joe before <laughs> you know before the big time hit. So, yeah. And Steve? Uh, three years, just a little less than three years. And they met you in the laundry room. Yeah. That's where yeah. they found you. Yes, they met me in the laundry room. Yeah, that's where I met them. And well, about three years now I've been doing it, and it's been nice to know everybody and it's learning great. from them, and it's been great. Fun. Yeah. Fun. yeah. And Christine, were you just kind of thrown in the mix, or did you really have an interest in paranormal? Believe it or not, my interest started. Um, with Joe, um, he used to he used to work at CompUSA way back when, and um, he used to always take Wednesdays off for a reason, um, and that was to watch Ghost Hunters. <laughs> and uh, he got me into the show. I started liking it. Then he became on the he went you know he joined the team, Taps home team, and I uh, went from there. And they had an I had an opportunity to um, join the team, and I, he says, "Are you interested?" I said, "Yeah." So I joined shortly. Actually. A little bit before Steven started, right? About a couple months? Yeah. yeah before, a couple months yeah. before Steven yeah. started, so. And forget it, you go on one investigation, you're hooked. Definitely hooked. Definitely. Yeah. Well, I, I agree with that. I'm sure you do, too. Mm -hmm. Now, it's funny because I'm always talking about on here um, teams that have T-shirts made, mm -hmm. okay? Because Steph and I, we don't have T-shirts. We don't, we just always wear, well, we're wearing your shirts today. But um, we don't have T-shirts, and I think what heightened the whole T-shirt craze was was taps, was taps yes. because of the, you know, it was brought into social media, and people started to. That's <coughs> the cool thing to do is is to go on a paranormal investigation, and and so forth. So now that you guys see it, and you've been on both sides, how do? You, what's your what's your opinion on that? Do you feel like social media has actually helped in popularity or limited? Not limited. That's the wrong word. That's the word I'm thinking of. You're not. <laughs> I'm reading. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> I think that it has. With social media, too. Twitter and Facebook and whatnot, mm -hmm. as the uh, paranormal word got out, that people, oh, my gosh, there's this great show out there. And, you know, people get to look for, for uh, dead people. Essentially, and and I it, like what Chris said. Once you start doing one or two investigations, your curiosity goes crazy. I think, and it gets you hooked. You know, you, you know what was that that I heard? You know, did I just see something fly across the room, or see what looked like a person? And when I went down there, there was nobody there. So I think with social media, you're able to to link with so many people. I mean, it's it's all over. Everybody is on Facebook and Twitter, um, and I think that helped draw the paranormal community together and expand the word so that all the groups formed and you know you kind of it, it took off like wildfire it was right. amazing and now we we so oh, sorry go ahead no, Christine. That's okay. uh, what I was going to add to that was I think it's just because it was it's acceptable now you can yeah. speak about it right yeah. so it's that's why you anymore. know it's not taboo yeah. anymore and everybody has their own way of investigating and and for it to branch out like this has been incredible and social media is really part of that I mean that's the only way I that's the only way this word got out. I mean, with television and Facebook and Twitter, like Joe said, and it's just growing. There's so many teams that develop, Now, you know? how often do you guys get called out on cases, whether it's residential or, or commercial? Um, is it, I imagine, do you think it's because of the name TAPS in the association, or do you think it's really people that are in I, need? I think it might be both. I, I think okay. it's yeah. partial due to to TV shows like Ghost Hunters and Ghost Hunters International, mm -hmm. and that uh, it, since it wasn't taboo anymore, that more and more like-minded people got together and, and wanted to further the field to find out what happens when we die. I think that's why most of us do it. I know that there are a lot of <coughs> groups that, that I've spoke to, and it's the same thing. It's, it's, their popularity has just increased because now it, people are more aware of 
of what's around them. Right. You also got to think there's so many groups now, and everyone seems to be having an investigation every night. So. Right. Yeah. So it is, it, people aren't afraid to call a group like us now, so that's yep. one of the good things. But I think we do get a lot of cases. I mean, it helps to have, ooh, who do you think of when you need somebody to come investigate? Oh, I'm going to contact TAPS. I don't think people realize there is the home team that's out there to help them. You know, they don't have to expect the TV crew. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say, you don't have yeah. to have the 50, yeah. 50 people. Right, yeah. and I think there's a sense of credibility that comes along with name TAPS, where you mm -hmm. guys have been around right. for so long, and people trust in that name, too, because like you said, I usually have a no t-shirt, strict no t-shirt policy because <laughs> you see the people that go on, they they basically parade around and they have t-shirts on that they either made with puff paint at home and they go out and they either charge people for investigations or oh, yeah. they're looking to um, get themselves onto television, but in turn you're screwing up the family's lives that you're dealing with. Right. So um, I am grateful for you know people that actually do the right thing. And yeah. if that takes people to call TAPS, then that's awesome because um, they feel like they still have somebody to trust, which is really nice yeah. because in this day and age, you don't know. Well, you I think this group takes it very serious. Yeah. Everybody on this group takes it very serious. Absolutely. It's not a joke. It's, it's the only T-shirt I'll wear. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we're all in it to win it. A question from the chat room that kind of goes along with what we're talking about a little bit. Um, it was directed at Joe, but I'd like to hear everybody's um, opinion about it. Is What do you think of evidence out there that is being deemed as fake, um, especially such as those new ghost apps for iPhone? That's really tough because with technology, you know, it's getting so good now that it's easy to fake a, a photo, a video, you know, and that's that. If you guys checked out, um, you, you guys at home, if you, if you checked out the, my, oh, my regular Facebook page, you guys might not be on it, but I just posted a picture. Oh, and did you post it on the TAPS page, the picture that we just took in yes. the studio? Yep, I did. No, so, I, actually, I'm sorry. It's on my personal page. It's on, so sorry, yeah. Well, never You'll mind. You'll see it. Just go, continue. <laughs> 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 You'll <laughs> see it. <laughs> I'll put it on the business page. I'll put it on the business page. Sorry about that. Never mind. I didn't say anything. Go ahead, Joe. So, so with that being said, it's so easy to fake a photo or a video. Um, and, and it's kind of sad, you know, because here we are trying to, to get to the heart of, of what's happened, what happens when, when you die, you know, and people take it seriously. But then there are, uh, with social media and the TV shows and everything like that, it, it, it kind of takes some of the credibility away because mm -hmm. so, so many groups want to be on TV, you know, and that's all they want is to be on television, which mm -hmm. is kind of sad. You know, luckily I had the opportunity, but, you know, I don't. I don't, I don't, we don't fake any, any kind of evidence no. at all, you know, we, we're Why? dead no. set against Why? it, you know, that doesn't it, it only hurts the field yeah. Yeah. if we do. Yeah. And the, do our that. main reason is to help people. Yes. I mean, the people who call us are either generally scared or yeah. want answers or just want to be told, hey, yeah, you know, your, your house is old, it's going to creak, but... If we go and fake evidence just so they go, oh, these guys are great, then that doesn't help them that one bit. Them. No. Right. No. No. Right. Now, have you had any negative backlash from people saying, oh, well, you're just, you're just part of that show, so, I mean, huh, yeah. how am I going to trust you? I, I, Do you I get that so, at all? Because with some of the fans you meet, you know, that's one of the first questions they ask sometimes is, is it real? Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, yeah, it is real. You know, well, I watch all these other shows, and some of it seems to be not real. Well, I can't speak to that. But I know for a fact for Ghost Hunters International and Ghost Hunters and, and the TAPS Home Team that we're not about that. We're here to help people and to further the field. So, you know, we have a genuine interest in it and we want to know. Now, go ahead. Sorry, Steph. You heard me. Um, to go along with that question, um, someone else from the chat room said, how does everyone feel about paranormal teams being attacked, such as um, being bullied, being called fake, oh, copycat I think that's teams? Oh, wow. This can go into a very deep, <laughs> deep area because this is something I'm very passionate about. Why? Mm -hmm. What does that do? Mm -hmm. um, I just think every time I see the negativity about other groups on um, through social med media, I just think it's awful because that just makes you, do they even think that just makes yourself look horrible? Why, why do we have to compete? This field is this... The research that we do, it's so huge. It, there's room for everybody. There should be no competition. There should be all, everybody should be able to work together, you know, to do this. Now everybody investigates the same way, um, and that's understandable. But whatever may work for you might not work for us and vice versa. So I just think it's just, 
my thing is maybe negative publicity for, is good publicity for them to make themselves out there. That's the only way they can. I think I have to agree. We've dealt yeah. with quite a bit of negativity as well and cutthroat. Oh, and, yeah. You know, like we've, we've gone into a place, people are, you know, dying to get in there right after us or before us. or It's like, who cares? Why can't we all just play nice in the sandbox? Right. right. Yeah, we're all here Let's for a common goal. Yeah, it's, all, it's, all it's all answers. ego. Yeah, but it's unfortunately, yeah. I think the people that are really out there attacking are the ones that want that the 15 minutes of fame and they want to be in the spotlight and they want to get on television so they feel like they get to it first they'll get the opportunity but they don't realize like this is our passion this is what we do and same as you Absolutely. we're not getting paid to do this we're not out there you know pushing ourselves to become famous or anything like that like we just like to do what we do. We like exactly. to help people. So, and most of the time we're in sweatpants and yes. <laughs> tank tops. Swedish fish. We, yeah, we eat a lot, obviously. Yes. But um, and, and that's what it's about. It's something because it doesn't matter to us what you look like or right. But on a like side that. note, uh, I have, I will go at somebody if I think that they're faking and causing harm. The people are out there who are calling their help and they want to go in there and, and fake evidence or, or tell them what they want to hear, you know, that, that's horrible, you know. We don't charge a dime, you know. And I believe that people who do paranormal investigations shouldn't charge people. Uh, it's all volunteer basis, so when you volunteer, you know that you've got to give up your time mm -hmm. and, and whatever funds that is necessary to conduct investigations. So a lot of us, we buy our own equipment, we pay for our own gas, our own food, and we don't charge anybody because we're there to help those people in need. Right, yeah. right. Along that note, um, it was directed to Joe, but I, still, it's directed to everybody. Um, do you think paranormal events, oops, so sorry, I lost the question. People are our chat room. quite active. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you think paranormal events are way too expensive, expensive and if all these groups keep going to certain locations, does that bring more activity when they leave or less activity? Well, I, I think with the events that are expensive, are paying for the people, their, their star guests that appears. Mm -hmm. and, and I guess that they have to get their, I guess, appearance fee. You know, it, it's a shame because it's so mm -hmm. expensive. You go to some of these events and it's an easy, you know, almost $300 price tag just for the event. But then you gotta realize they gotta pay for the hotel, they gotta pay for their food and any expenses that they may want to purchase at these events, pictures, t-shirts, what have you. And uh, if you have the means and, and that's what you want to do, then that's great. You know, but a lot of people have said that a, a lot of the events are getting way outrageously ex expensive and, and hard to do. Well, it's true because you do have that base fee of, say, $300 hmm. just to get into the event. Yeah. And then, you're right, you're obviously going to go and spend because you're there and mm -hmm. it's almost like a little mini vacation if it's something that you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. You know? So, now, you guys just do local Rhode Island. Would you ever consider going to Massachusetts or Connecticut? Oh, or we actually we actually do do Massachusetts. Oh, okay. In mm -hmm. New Hampshire. And Connecticut. Connecticut. And so, we, we, we get the case files that come into the website for New England. So, we are basically the... the the taps, you know, the the branch in New England. We handle, we try to handle all that. Vermont's a little tough. We haven't spread any members out that far. I think we got one <laughs> one member, Demetria, Western Mass. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, most of our cases lately have been Massachusetts and Northern Rhode Island. Yeah. 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 Now, would you think about doing something international if they asked you? Oh, oh I would love yeah. to do an international oh, yeah. case for yeah. that <laughs> Can I go? Give me the advice. <laughs> Definitely. They're saying, what about a cruise ship? <laughs> Why don't we just yeah, a cruise? Uh, haunted cruise ship would be awesome, I think. You know? Uh, well, you have some to people can't. Out. Can't. <laughs> <laughs> I get seasick. No? I don't know. I might be with Christine with that yeah. one. Yeah. We'll I'll fly there and meet I'll you. Do it. Yeah, there we go. I'll do it. I, don't I think sure Costa Rica. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So awesome. we'll just. Western Caribbean on <laughs> tour. Yeah. yeah. Why not? Yeah. And back Why to not? Scotland, back to Oh, all I want to go to Scotland. Can you please beautiful plan beautiful. something? No, we have to I know you want to go to Ireland. Ireland. Yeah, we're going to visit Barry. We're going to go, go, go hang Barry out with Barry. Yeah. <laughs> I, have I, have family, I was just going to say, yeah. I have family in Scotland. We can all stay. Yeah. But they always like, I mean, they, they've been to all the different places that are deemed pretty haunted in Ireland, and they'll always email me like, I went to this place today, and I had this really like strange, like they don't really realize what they're dealing with. Yeah. It, which is funny because if I don't know if everybody's been to Ireland before or anything like that, but Irish people are very um, 
gullible, but at the same time, like, they truly believe in all these legends, and oh, yeah. they have dealt with all this stuff. Like, I grew up listening to stories about fairies and leprechauns and everything. And, and banshees. Oh, yes. And um, I, I laugh because they'll come to me with this stuff, and it's like, you don't realize what you're actually dealing with, mm. but you are experiencing something that completely freaks them out. So I'm like, I can't wait to go just to visit these places that are either no-name places or they're famous places, and they're just dealing with this all the time. And there's and so much out yes, there. Yes, there is. You're going to have a great time when you go. It's yeah, I can't wait. We'll have to take a field trip. <laughs> yes. We talk about field trips always all the time. About field trips. We never go. We never go. Um, is there a question? or No. Oh, okay. I just... It's okay. I'm trying just, to implement them as we're discussing oh, okay. the actual topics. So. Okay, good. All right. Oh, cool. um, so, Steve, what's your favorite... <laughs> what happened to that? What's that? What's that? <laughs> so, what's that come from? What's your favorite piece of equipment? <laughs> um, I like the question. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's Steve. Um, Is that... Should we discuss that on television? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to go electronic equipment. Yeah. Yes, please, go something. If it's electronic, it's involved, yes. Uh, if it's electronic, well, it's a real time recorder. We're not going to go electronic, just go something. <laughs> It'd be the recorder, probably. I think you get a lot more with the recorder. Okay. I like using that a lot, yeah. All right. So, yeah. Christine? I am definitely just with the recorder. Um, I, Personally, I don't like any extra equipment because it just takes your mind off the investigation, having to worry about changing tapes and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So, strictly the recorder. And me, my body, you know, senses. Well, that. I was just going to... Uh, yes, well, I'm glad that you guys brought it. So, so, Tom, I assume it's the same and Joe, it's the same. Like, use your body to... Yeah. Definitely. To feel things, and that's something actually, that's so important. I'll throw in something different. <laughs> I actually, I think I'm the only one that carries one in my in my bag is uh, a level, because yeah. we debunk a lot of our thing is debunking, oh, yeah, and true. a lot of things about the ball moves across right. the floor, right. or something slides <laughs> off a shelf, or the the doors on the cabinets keep opening. Uh, I don't know how many. I know Joe's probably <laughs> done it. How many times you put a level up there, and it's mm -hmm. psh, you know. <laughs> All of a sudden, you notice it's not really level, so maybe that's why the ball is rolling across the floor. And it's just—it's a, a simple thing. It's right. Almost everyone has one in their toolbox, and it's sometimes it can phone. explain things. Yeah, when I got the question, I couldn't say the body. That's right. <laughs> things are going to get real interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't lying. I think it gets overlooked. Because your human body, you know, with all your senses, you know, right. the, yeah, the, you, biggest the skin, you know, it's so, so sensitive to the slightest touch, feel, the electricity in the air, and, and, and your hearing, you know, it, it's, your body is the first piece of equipment that goes into an investigation. Right, yeah, exactly. And whatever you bring along with it only adds to that. We actually did, a, well, we did um, a, th a seminar up in uh, Portsmouth, New I think it was Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Um, our team lead, Tracy, another member, Jess, and me were up there doing a fundraiser. And it was a girl that was actually, she was deaf. And she was like, because I'm deaf, can I not be a ghost hunter? I'm like, you have your eyes, you have your senses. I go, you, you have awareness of everything that's around you. I go, you can use that. I go, every other sense you have is a tool. Right. But just because you don't have one doesn't mean you can't ghost hunt. Exactly. I'm glad that you brought that up. Because it's true, I think a lot of times people may think that because of, Maybe a physical disability that can limit them, but actually, mm -hmm. there's so much more than just that one-sided disability. Uh, it's <laughs> funny that you say that. I have a friend that I that I talk to a lot and see at events. His name is Adam Bonnet, and he he's in a wheelchair. And we were going back and forth, and he was saying, you know, I kind of mm -hmm. want to stop my own group. Is is that feasible, being handicapped? And I said, why, why not? You should be able to. Just because you're handicapped will maybe deter you from getting access to the building, but you, you still have all your senses. Mm -hmm. So as long as you can gain access into the, big in, uh, into the building, I think anybody can be a paranormal investigator, yeah. whether you're handicapped or not. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's the same thing as having a career in any different field. If it's right. feasible, yep. then do so. Sure. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's what you want to do, yeah. Now, with all these locations that you guys go to, is there one where you just need to go back to, whether it's a residential or commercial? Wow. Do you have that what, one? What's a favorite? Yeah. Well, for me, I mean, being uh, to 35 different countries in the short time that I was with Ghost Hunters International, 
that there are a couple of places that would love to go. American Samoa was awesome. Uh, Belize, you know, you hike two, two miles into the jungle, cross three rivers and into a <laughs> cave that's two miles long. Wow. You know, those places are amazing. Scotland, England, Ireland, all these places were, were awesome. So I would love to go back there. But if you talk about within the States, you know, there are a couple of places being being on, on the show and on the Taps Home team that I haven't been to in the United States. I haven't been to the Stanley. I haven't been to the Shanley. I haven't been to Eastern States. I haven't been to a lot of these places that I would still like to go. Well, I hear road trip. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there we go. You, right? yeah. but um, you're just not driving the bus. That's all. <laughs> no, because I'd be like, we gotta stop. We gotta do this. We gotta do we that. We never get there. Well, we well we'd make a lot of pit stops. Sure. Of Steve, you know, yeah, a lot of bathroom yeah. bathroom breaks. <laughs> Every yeah. five minutes, no. Yeah. Um, well, we don't, we're not as lucky as Joe to go, you know, on the other side of the world. But <laughs> I think one of our favorite places that I and I think I can speak for Steve also is um, we work well with um, a sister group in Rise Up Paranormal. Yeah, great bunch um, of people. Pain House in Coventry, absolutely. Mm -hmm. One of the best locations here locally that I will forever go to. Yeah. And, and Nathaniel they, and Green, and too. And Nathaniel Green, that place yep, is awesome. That, that place. And, and it's, we're grateful for, the, for them to be able to share that with us yeah. Yeah. at those locations because so. they're just... Um, they're such a, a welcoming oh my group. God. They, they are. Work yeah. with they them. Are. They're we so them. friendly, willing to help, and, and, you know, they're just so awesome. You know, I'm, I'm thankful that we get to work closely with yeah. Rise Up. And they're also yeah. a both great Connecticut group. and Rhode Island. They're a great group to bounce ideas off yes. of. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have such like-minded in the field as us, so... So it works out. It's a pretty become a pretty good relationship between. Oh the yeah, two absolutely. I know Steph and I do a lot with Ken and Dave and, and the whole group. Um, they've been so welcoming. And oh yeah. It's just it's just the relationship with everyone seems to be growing and. Yeah. Oh, not to get mushy. <laughs> yeah. At the same time, like it's, it's it is great. To, it's, yeah, it's growing into time. like yeah. one big family, you know, and, and it's it's a nice feeling. And, you know, there are going to be those groups that you may not see eye to eye, but you will run into them during certain conventions and so forth. Yeah. Right. But then you have, like, your, your pack, you know, yeah. like the, the people that... And every time you do an event, you, you meet some great people. You know, we met uh, uh, oh, Mass Ghost Hunters Paranormal Society. You know, they're a, a, a newer kind of a newer group, and they're great people on there. And they're, they're like, oh, my gosh, we want to learn from you. You know, there's so much that you could teach me, but... And my thoughts, same here. As I thought the you, same thing. You yeah. can teach us. They can yeah. learn you know, from them learn also. So much. Yeah. 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 Marco Bella from uh, Mass Ghost Hunters. He's a pretty, pretty good guy. He's a great guy. And uh, last couple of opportunities, he actually asked Joe, um, the last few investigations, to join his <coughs> team, and just kind of work together. And that's what I, that's what I like about it. It's groups should be able to be to able to do that. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and that's something I'm, I'm hoping that the TAPS home team will be able to continue mm -hmm. to do is to work with other groups and just kind of collaborate with each other, you know. So what's what's next? Uh, just let me know if you have a, oh, a ice cold. I'm partially <laughs> here. That was not not welcome. <laughs> I know. I think I, um, what's that? For Raynaud's. 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 You do not Raynaud's. have Raynaud's, I promise you. No, I swear. No, you really don't, I promise. You don't. <laughs> um, actually, that felt kind of good because I think. Yeah, if you feel nauseous. Yeah. Um, all right, now that you've distracted me, let me read my questions. My um, people are asking about a public place in Rhode Island that you would love to investigate whether you have it or not. Would you say that the Payne House is one of those places that people should get out to? Oh, yeah, definitely. I know. They is can Ken still doing, uh, from Rise Up, the, the group tour? Yes. Yes. So, yes. I'm not sure how many dates he has open, but... Right. But if anybody is interested definitely. in that, you should definitely, oh, definitely. check definitely that check out because yeah. yeah. I know yeah. proceeds go to benefit the pain House and to keep it up and running, so yes. that's awesome. That's what's great um, about it. I think they'd have to go for, to Rise Up Paranormal, riseupparanormal.com. Yes, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, um, it's a Rhode Island group and a Connecticut group, so we yes. got to remember them too. If you could investigate anywhere, where would you investigate? And you, all of you must answer. Hmm. That you haven't investigated before. I got I'm two assuming. on my bucket list. One's the Stanley, mm -hmm. the other one's Alcatraz. Mm, I said that to my husband. My husband got to go to Alcatraz and I was like, oh, I wish I could go in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Mine would be Stanley and um, uh, what do you call it down there? And uh, the battlefields. Gettysburg. Oh, Gettysburg. 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 Yeah. Gettysburg. I'd like to I've never been to Gettysburg. That. I haven't been there either. Yeah. I would have to agree with Stephen now that I'm thinking about it. It would definitely be the Stanley. 
in Gettysburg because I heard this this amazing stuff at those locations. Same for me, Gettys Gettysburg, um, um, the Stanley, the Shanley. Um, there's actually one place in Rhode Island I want to get to, the Lad Center. It's condemned. Yeah. And you know, right. people and the police I, chase you off because yeah. we tried to go and we kind of got you know kind of shuffled. <laughs> my bit. my cousin actually but. just filmed a movie um, called Back, Back Mask, which is going to be out in October at the Lad School. That was last July she filmed it. Cool. But it all took place at the Lad. Wow. And Penrose, yeah. Penrose, where we filmed the mm -hmm. live yeah, show. Yeah. That was a great place. That was mm -hmm. a great place. Yep. Huge place. So I think we should designate a month for us to just <laughs> take this long road trip and go because. Um, the Stanley seems to be an all-around crowd pleaser. I know I was there once. Um, my mother's side of the family, all of, they live in Colorado, <laughs> so um, when we were driving through, I made my sister and her husband stop so I could just go and stand in the lobby. <laughs> and this was going back like 10, 12 years ago, you know? Yeah. But I, I remember I just like stood in there, and I'm like, oh, I'm here. And then, you know, they beeped, and so I had to go back out. And <laughs> No, Continue on. Yeah. Have you so ever been to uh, Mount Washington? No, I haven't been there either. Yeah, that's and beautiful. that's just right in New Hampshire. Yeah. Beautiful place. That's one. I just went and did a reading uh, in Salem, Massachusetts um, last week. So I did the little walk around the Hawthorne Hotel. And the, cool. the reading was right on, um, is it West Chestnut? No. It was, it's right next to the Witches Museum. Mm -hmm. Okay. That, it was right mm -hmm. on the... Can't, oh my gosh, it, it, it escapes me. But anyways, um, so just to actually go into this beautiful house right there in the heart of the city, it was, it was really, really nice. And I wanted to get out and do more, you know. <laughs> I think another place like that would be Newport, <laughs> just any place in Newport, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. with the history and everything. Of yes. A lot of the, man not just the mansions, but just... Just some of the other older buildings that have been around forever down there. Even just down by the water and everything. I remember I ran for my abilities for a very long time. I wanted nothing to do with them. I used to go out and investigate, and I'd hold a ghost meter, and people would like yell at me because I wasn't paying attention to it, but it was because I was busy listening, and I was trying to convince them that I had no abilities at all. Like, don't, don't make me do that. But I was, um, I think it was... God, almost 10 years ago, I was walking down Thames Street in Newport, and I got to like where the arcade is, okay. and I saw a sailor standing right in front of me, just wow. outside it. I screamed fast, like, and ran as fast as you could possibly imagine. I would not go back. I refused. I'm like, I'm not doing it. And I couldn't tell anybody why, but yeah, that anywhere down there is just really like active and. I actually was just there, unfortunately, the other day. <laughs> oh, <laughs> bad food. It was pretty <laughs> active. Yeah, it was pretty active yeah. in your belly. <laughs> but um, but I was telling my husband that like this is one of like the first like experiences that I kind of like had where I was like, all right, I can't run from it anymore. I can't I can't escape it anymore. But um, I think a lot of those different buildings and even like down by the waterfront is just so it's different. Like the energy is just really interesting. So that's a that's an interesting place to go. We'll bring you someday. Yes. I won't. I won't embarrass you. I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> now I like to ask you girls a question. Mm -hmm. um, since you're kind of getting into more of the investigation <coughs> portion of it, what kind of investigation would you like to conduct uh, or go to? Because there are some places that, that you have to get dirty, that you gotta crawl all on your stomach and oh, get I've into been these there, tight Joe. places. Yeah. I've <laughs> been there. <laughs> <laughs> um, we both have. Yeah, we both have. The only thing I kind of say beforehand is I don't do bugs. If there's bugs, yeah. do not tell right. me. Because, but if there is, I just put like a hood on and make sure that they can't crawl inside my hair or anything like that. But we both have gone to some pretty. Um, dirty places. places. Yeah. Dirty, dirty places. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Go to the next level. I d I'm just <laughs> emphasizing on, right, I mean, yes. But we have, like, we... Cool. We don't, I mean, we get called a lot to help out with teams and, and different people, and um, sometimes the, we actually, we've shown up on construction sites in flip-flops. Because we, they, here's the thing, they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't because tell because don't us. Know. They can't oh. tell us ahead of time We don't want to know going. anything, so oh, it's okay. you're pretty much... We end up like a big science experiment. People mm -hmm. want to know, like, they've done... Um, and then we went to the farm the same day. Yeah, we went to a farm that was just, we should have brought sneakers. And I thought to myself, I was here the whole time, you should really bring sneakers. And I thought to myself, well, it was like 85 degrees out that day. Yeah, it was hot. I could not 
deal with pants and sneakers at the time, so I was like, forget it. If it was a big deal, they would have told me. No, they didn't tell me. <laughs> um, but they like to bring us to places. We get in a car at one location, like a safe location, and we drive to wherever we're going. And they find it funny if we're telling them where we're going the whole time we're going there. And <laughs> when we get there, they separate us. She'll go on one level, I'll go on another and with two different people. And we'll just read, and then we'll switch, and we'll go back, and then they kind of compare notes at the end. Oh, okay, yeah. um, I know Rise Up's done that with us as well. And mm -hmm. Yeah, but we, we showed up to a very large farm full of a lot of animals Peacock. with flip-flops on. And, um, Horses. <laughs> a, actually, a condemned mill building in Rhode Island where it was not safe to walk anywhere without construction. They were, yeah. they were doing demo. That's yeah. what they were doing. They were doing demolition. And, and, and we actually like went in the building and everything, and there's broken glass and like just a bunch of stuff that was definitely dangerous, but we had no idea. So yeah. we, we'll go anywhere. It's yeah. just... We need to know if we should be properly dressed or not. <laughs> <laughs> now the strict rule is sweatshirts, jeans, and sneakers, no matter how hot exactly. it is. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> because so. I, I know there are a lot of people out there that say, well, I don't think it's right that you have uh, uh, psychics on investigations or sensitive. And I'm not sure why that is, but you know, I don't know if I feel it because it may, it, it may hinder the investigation. You know, I kind of like the way you guys do it. You know, we separate it. Yeah. You know, you guys go in for us, and, and you would see what you can sense or feel, and then keep it to yourselves. And then we go in, or an investigation group goes in and see what they can get, and then collaborate together. Mm -hmm. Some groups out there, or some people out there that I've known, will have a group out there <coughs> and let the, let the psychics or the sensitives conduct a whole investigation. And that's fine for some people, you know, but I think if you're trying to get a scientific approach or trying to get to the crux of things that it should be done differently, right. like the way you guys do it. I want to add to that. <coughs> when it comes to that, the way I've, I've seen you work, I've seen you go into the paint house, and mm -hmm. when we investigate, and you have investigators there, I notice that you guys don't say anything, which I appreciate, mm -hmm. because sometimes I think that the so-called, and I want to be very nicely, <coughs> psychics and mediums are out there, they tend, like Joe says, they tend to like shout out things, and I think that hinders an actual investigator to put, yeah, yeah. the idea <laughs> into the heads of what might be happening. Yeah. To me, a true investigator seeks knowledge of what's happening around them and not what gets told to them. Right. So, well, I think we both started off as investigators before we kind of brought the medium aspect into it. So, we learned like as much as possible. Like I, I've been doing this for a very long time. Um, I know there's a big age difference between the two of us. Not you always you bring tell, up age. Why is it age? You can just Nobody say you've done it for a long time. I've done it for a long time. <laughs> That's it. That's all. But we started at two different times is what I'm saying. So my long time might not be as long or short as your long time. That was my point. You long got it to time. the next level. I was good. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking of that. Love you long time. Oh, okay. I'm glad you anyway. said it. It really went off in my head. It would have just sounded funny coming out of your mouth. Exactly. <laughs> coming from an Asian. Me love you long time. But yeah, so we both did it that way first. So it was kind of like, you know, we appreciated the, the aspect that other people take to, um, I'm dropping things now. I, I know. I'm here. sitting very still today. Um, <laughs> We kind of appreciate like where people are coming from and their approach, and we do our own thing. But now, oh, like, cool. it became I don't even know when it started, but people just kind of scooped us up and what said, "Can you help us?" And it started with walkthroughs instead of investigations. I don't think we've been on a real investigation in a very long time. Yeah, we haven't. We no, haven't like a real like like a because it's always, "Hey, do you want to come check this place out?" Okay, mm -hmm. and and they just observe us while yep. we do our thing. We have people you know? that like to work with us, like while they're investigating because they feel like their evidence kind of spikes up and we kind of sure. help that and mm -hmm. then there's other people that prefer the beforehand and then the afterwards like going by themselves so it doesn't really matter to us we kind of just do whatever we need to to help out That's and also if you're on with them though it can help validate EVPs well, I was just going to say we love is, the EVP sessions yeah. we, we work a lot with people like to have us there for the EVP sessions because I have actually worked with um, Mike Markowitz and we went to do a really old hotel and everything that I was saying, he can hear it back, them answering, like it, it sounds like a full conversation, what wow. I say and then them answering me perfectly and then saying, um, you know, like I, it was like, I think it was a small child and then I saw her run by and then all of a sudden I said, what are you doing here? And it says, looking for mama. So oh. it was like a perfect conversation. So he's like, after that, I, he changed his view on how to kind of do 
the whole medium thing. So, um, but it's up to everybody. Like I don't care whether people right. are into it or not. It's we're mm -hmm. doing our own thing, kind of helping out. It's it's our passion, and yeah. this is what we do. Take uh, it or leave I'm, it. I'm mm -hmm. glad it's getting better. Yeah. That you know that, that yeah. you're yeah. meshing with the paranormal <coughs> investigators. You know, because like you said, you're interested in it as well. So why not? Right. Yep. Exactly. And and just like you guys said. Your favorite piece of equipment first is your body mm. right. because it's, it's easy, you know, you can pick up on things. And just like any anybody, there are some people that might be a little bit more sensitive than others, you know. Um, Christine, you might be able to hear things like, did you hear that? Where Joe, you might feel it, you know, mm -hmm. it, and it's the same right. for us. So I think it would only add to you know, finding answers mm -hmm. of places that you are going on an investigation with, too. Yeah, I usually tell people, like, you can sit in the dark for eight hours if you want by yourself in a room that has absolutely no activity, or you can have us come in first and help you out and say, okay, there's a little boy sitting in the corner over here, you might want to talk yeah. to him. And it makes it a little bit easier and kind of cuts the time a little bit shorter. Well, but it's funny that you brought that up because it was one place that we went to together, Steph and I went together, and... Um, we went downstairs and there was a group there that had three K2 meters oh, yes. next to each other. And they're like, all right, what, what's going on here? What's going on? And I said, can I just tell you who's here? <laughs> and they're like, who are you? And I'm like, you're like, Tiffany's here. We know Tiffany's here. And it's like, no, that's not what we meant. But yeah, like I was keeping quiet because I knew they were totally not into the whole medium thing. But right. they're like, everybody needs to have a cell phone shut off. These K2 meters are going off right now. And... I was just We're like, like Stop. we can make it a lot easier for you. <laughs> just want to listen. I know. Like, <laughs> like, we're just trying to help you. We're all in the same boat, you know. Yeah, but they, they wanted nothing to do with it. So it's like, all right, we're just going to leave them there with their 3K2 meters and go off and do our just, own yeah, thing. Yeah. Just offering our services in case you wanted it. But Yeah, we're here for a reason, too. I, in my, like, Tiffany and I are both mediums, but we all have, like, completely different abilities. So... She might be able to sense one thing on one level, but I'll be able to sense it on another. So she's picking up on the names. She can hear them, and I can see them physically. It was three three men that were down there, right? I think that's what it was. So they're both they're all looking at me like, what are these people doing? <laughs> and she starts talking like to try to talk for them, and they're just kind of shaking their heads, and I'm laughing, and I'm like, it's not worth it because they don't care. <laughs> but at that point, you kind of have to walk away. You can't force people to yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. to right. understand what we do or to come onto our side, so to speak. So. It is what it is. Exactly. Yeah. We do it anyways. We just <laughs> we enjoy it, so that's why we do it. That's why we do it. It's our passion here. Yep. Exactly. Definitely. I think that's important. It is, and and if you're in it for the right reasons, you know, highest greatest good to help people out, then mm -hmm. I think that, you know, in my opinion, that's why I do what I do. You know. That's awesome. Now, I'm going to ask you, Joe, only because the international aspect of things. <coughs> What, where have you been where you have been so freaked out that you wanted to just run? Or ha uh, have you even experienced something like that? Yeah, um, uh, we were in uh, Belgium and we were at a fort and uh, Scott and Scott Temperman, my partner on mm -hmm. the show, we were going to uh, the top of the fortress where there was this big hole in the ground where supposedly a bomb went off and killed like 3,000 people. So we were investigating, and on the way up, we're laughing and we're joking around. Um, but then all of a sudden, within seconds, I got this overwhelming feeling of sadness and, and came flooding in, and I couldn't control it. And I was kind of wondering, like, what's going on? You know, I, I feel really strange. And then the tears started coming out, out of me. I was bawling, and I, I wanted to walk off camera, but my camera girl says, you know, i, I got to film this. You know, this is part of the investigation. Um, but it was it was so overwhelming and so it was so bizarre to me that I, I, I it took me forty five minutes to shake it off, so that kind of creeped me out a little bit. And then the second one was uh, we were in a castle in Denmark where I got bit physically. Something bit me and left teeth marks on my arm, and that freaked me out. Did we, you feel it at the time or was it after? We were down in the in the, it was called Castle Dragslum. We were in Denmark, and uh, it was myself, Brandy Green, the other investigator, and one camera person. We were in the dungeon where supposedly Mary Queen of Scots' husband was in prison and died down there. Well, we would, had been down there for like an hour trying to get something to happen. We didn't hear anything. We didn't see anything. We didn't feel anything. And I was even provoking at that point. And we were like, oh gosh, it's kind of, there's nothing down there. Let's go upstairs and find a different part of the castle. So I, up the stairs I went, 
And as I was going up the stairs, my arms had to burn. Like somebody was putting a cigarette out in me. It was burning. I'm like, it's really burning, Brandy. She says, I'll look at it when I get top, t to the top of the stairs. And when I pull my long sleeve shirt and my sweatshirt, there was teeth marks. Freaked me out. I was kind of like, <laughs> what's going on? What is that? You know, and mm -hmm. it was just the top, not the bottom. And you know, I, I, I told the producers, and they're like, oh, we got to get pictures and get it on film. And, now we need to just go back down and see if it happens again. I'm like, you. <laughs> You're like, no. Like, you hit me. You know what else could it do? <laughs> no, you know, no. So that kind of that kind of was freaky for me. You know, and luckily I haven't had any kind of any kind of demonic activity. You know, that kind of is, is something that I I'm really nervous with. I don't know if I want to experience something like that. Um, but okay, okay. Do we do we have questions? Or? Yes. Okay. Um, would you rather know the history of a place that you're in before or after the investigation? I think oh. it's I think it's very important you know the history of the place <laughs> yeah. before you go in. Mm -hmm. Just before. not just for knowledge of what you could find, but for your team's safety. Mm -hmm. um, you don't want to go blind into anything if this was a place of great torture or right. or sorrow or because you, you have to arm yourself not only. Uh, not only with your equipment, but your emotions and your, your mental state. So you need to be prepared for anything you could possibly walk right. into. Living or dead, I think. Yeah, exactly. I agree to a point. Um, sometimes if you're with the team, that I'm glad that everybody else knows mm -hmm. what's going on in the place. But sometimes I'd rather not. Right, I that's go how in, we work. Yeah, I want to yeah. go in to see if I could get what I get on my own. Yes. So I could kind of collaborate with everyone else. You know, so at, at times when we were filming the show, I would tell those guys, I don't want to read it. You know, I'd rather go in blind. And uh, sometimes they would listen and sometimes it would, I would have to, to mm -hmm. know what's going on. But. I would rather go into knowing the history. I mean, the history is really important. However, sometimes I prefer not to know the claims that were made. Mm -hmm. Just so uh, after the investigation, I can see if I can collaborate what the claims are. But for the most part, like Tom, I would agree with Tom. I would like to know the history. Just because you can arm yourself a little better, you know, going there, feeling safe, you got to be able to put that little white bubble around you. Right, you know? exactly. You know, yeah, yeah. that's what so. like we do. We have to have somebody that's bringing us know everything as far as like the people ahead of time, the house ahead of exactly. time. Exactly. Just because we don't know, we need someone on our safe side. That's why so. I love working with historical societies. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what else do I have? Do you find it difficult to find serious cases versus people who just want to meet you? Um, for the Taps Home team, I, I'd say there's been a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. um, being on the show, I, I would tell my case manager, please don't tell people that I'm coming because I don't want them to think that we're coming to film an episode. Right. You know, And, and sometimes when we show up, um, they're like, well, where's everybody else? Where's the camera people? Oh, where's Jane yeah. Grant? Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, that kind of thing. And then we have to explain to them, no. I thought, the, I thought Jay and Grant, yeah. everybody else is going to be at the <laughs> so, wrong, but go ahead, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. The same time, though, we've actually had cases where the people go, oh, it's, it's just you guys? Thank God. I, did, oh, I didn't want to be filmed. Yeah. 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 Don't want to be It's the opposite, I think you know? both sides. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, too, yeah. yeah. Now, um... I have one more. Oh, okay, sorry, go ahead. Has anyone ever had anything follow them home or attached to them? I wow. haven't. I have, yes. I live alone and I was laying in bed and it's like something walked by the bed and... <laughs> like a panda bear? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, it shook the bed pretty good. Wow, panda bear. Why did you look at me? That was so random, panda bear. So that was a little starling. Just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Joe that, dressed up like I'm a furry. I'm going to have that image Sorry, in my head now tonight. Now taking it to the <laughs> next <laughs> level. Right. Yeah, you were saying that you were getting scratched recently, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It feels like I, I get up and mm -hmm. I've got to scratch my arm for no reason. I know I didn't do it the day before. And yeah, we can get rid of that for you. <laughs> <laughs> I always get the threat when I leave from my wife. Don't bring anything home with no. you. Yeah, so, <laughs> that, so I think not. that kind of scares me. So, yeah, it happens. <laughs> I luckily haven't. Um, no, no, no. I'm trying to think. No. I mean, I mean, after investigation, we try to make sure nothing follows us home. You know, we'll say it verbally: "Please don't follow us. You're not welcome. This is right, my house. Right. This is where I live." Um, and we don't know if that actually helps or or not. Um, but um, we, while we were in filming for GHI in, in France, we were 
staying at a chateau. And uh, we had to sleep one night into the, in the chateau to see what we could find. But the next day when we went back to our hotel rooms, I believe something followed us back to the hotel. Because at like 4.30 in the morning, I was watching television because we had just gotten home two hours before. I had seen a black mask kind of swoop under the t television. And I'm kind of like, am I, am I imagining that? Am I dreaming right. it? Am I half asleep? So I kind of shrugged it off. But the next morning when I had asked the rest of the cast if anything happened around that time, a lot of them said yes. You know, um, One girl said that she heard Barry Fitzgerald's voice and saw a hand out the window beckoning her to come out. And she said, and my room was like 10 feet off the ground, so I knew it couldn't be Barry, but it sounded like him, and I could see what looked like a hand beckoning her to come out. Um, so I believe that, that it has followed us to the hotel. Now, I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> okay, so when you, when you do film, say, for the show, is it... Do you just film for one night, or...? No, uh, when we go out filming, we leave the United States, and we go out for like five weeks. You know, five weeks home, and then a week or two home, and then five weeks back out, and we do it for nine or 10 months out of the year. Um, and when we're at a location filming an, an episode, it, it takes a week to film in half an episode. Mm -hmm. So it's two cases, um, and we're in sometimes two different countries for those two weeks. So it takes about a week to film in half an episode, which is one case. Now, this is for the whole group. Um, do you watch other shows like Ghost Adventures, Dead Files, um, the bio channel My Ghost Story? Have you guys been approached to be on that? or Not to be on, no, but... I, 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 I like, like some it. of them. I, I do, I do watch some you of them, know, yeah. I, I like the Dead Files, you know. I love the Dead Files. Um, I like the, their approach, and I, I've met Steve the Chavez. Mm -hmm. He's a great mm -hmm. guy. Mm -hmm. um, down to earth, and he's kind of, you know, kind of like a detective kind of guy from Brooklyn. He's great. You know, I, I like my ghost story. I like, um, I like haunting. kind of the the haunting. I like celebrity ghost stories because I want to see if the star is here. <laughs> <laughs> and I kind of like that. It's entertainment purposes for me. Um, but I, I I do like some of the other shows. Yeah. You guys, do, do you them. agree? Yeah, I do yeah. watch them now, and I like to more of seeing techniques and other things mm -hmm. that they may be doing and stuff. So yeah, I, I do watch them. Now, do you watch your mm -hmm. own Ghost Hunters? Do you watch that? I actually watch it less. Now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I do buy them all on DVD. <laughs> but, um, no, it's funny. It is like Steve. I like to watch them when they first come out just to see um, how they're different. Um, yeah. I agree with Joe. I like the the new one, the detectives and the way they do things, and it's interesting to see that, you know, especially like a guy that was an investigator his whole life in a different, a different profession, how he applies all that stuff, you know, his approach. Um, but, yeah, I, if it's on and I f come across it, I watch him, you know. I, I watch it because when we film it, it's totally different. So I don't really know, don't know the outcome or how it's put together. So for me, I watch it just to see how they put together the right. show. Right. And have you done an actual um, full 24-hour investigation? You know how sometimes they... Um, we will film, when we go out filming for, for a show, um, sometimes we'll arrive there at like 11 or 12 in the afternoon. And sometimes we do stay overnight, and sometimes we stay till, till dawn. So, and then I know we have to wrap up the show, which I don't want to do because I feel like there's so many more questions. It should have been two-hour show. It should have been. It should have been. But I just want to know what's next for you guys. Is there an event that you guys are doing? Where can people contact you and or meet you? Or um, is there anything happening? As of right now, we're just in the midst of trying to put together some um, events with the Taps Home Team at some local areas. Um, but uh, I'll be traveling with Joe this weekend out to New York. Um, to do a little bit of uh, a little filming. bit of filming, um, Chris Cesare from from um, his documentary movie has asked us to be in his sequel DVD movie. Um, so we're we're going to New York to film that, and that's going to be some fun for us. And in uh, July twenty sixth or twenty seventh, I'll be in Alabama. Uh, it's Lost Furnace with Adam Barry. Birmingham, Alabama. <laughs> 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 
All right. Well, thank you guys so much for being a part of the show. Us. Thank and you I'm us. sorry yes. we didn't get to everybody's questions. Did we? That's okay. We answered most of them. Oh, good. And uh, hopefully next time, Trace, you'll be here, and the rest of the yes, Paps Home the team. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and everybody's Jess, invited. And... Yes, and we do. We do miss everybody. Yes. And I think we're going to the Stanley. So we're gonna start packing. Yeah, we're gonna go. So until I come back from Florida. Okay. Okay. All right. All right, guys. Well, tune in next time for another fun-filled Spirit Connections. And thank you so much for walking. Walking? Walking. Walking. I'm thinking of The Walking Dead. Um, watching. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a good night.